Do you want to learn more about the real Belize and listen to locals and expat stories that are actually living here in Belize? Well, you're in the right place right now. You're listening to Belize Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Macarena Rose. Talk Radio, and oh, you've joined us today while we are blessed to be here with a gentleman that lives in San Ignacio, Cayo, that is extremely talented. And, you know, what do we talk about on Belize Talk Radio? Well, we talk about everything and anything to do with Belize. And how do you get to learn more about our country? Well, it's by meeting people that live here, that, that actually are living their lives and doing something that's special. And the gentleman we have with us today is is that man. His name is Emmanuel, and I want to welcome you to the show today. And thank you, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And tell me, what is your last name? Mangar. Mangar. Yeah. And and so last night, you know, we got to hear you play at Greedy's Pizza. Yeah. And and I love Greedy's Pizza. I always go there because of my pizza, and they're my dear friends that own it. And so I'm very partial. It's on my my list to get to every week. But last night, I had not heard you play. I had not been there on a Friday night. But you said you said something. You make you make in a you try to make an effort to make it every week. Well, you should try make it every week on Fridays. I'm thinking I play now. Every Friday. <laughs> I'm thinking now on Fridays. It's a good point. Yeah. And and usually by Friday I'm like, oh, I'm gonna chill. But but what's fascinating to me is that you know God works in mysterious ways. And you know my dear friends were in town, Juan and Esther from Belmopan, and I was like, you have to try this pizza. Because, you know, I come from the North Americas yeah. and there's good pizza that's stunning and stellar and yummy and yeah. not like theirs. <laughs> so I was like, you've got to go try it. So that's why we went last night. Okay. And, and you were there playing. And, you know, I have to share with you listeners that, you know, there's a lot of musicians in, in Belize. And to have somebody my, where my ears, like, piped up and... and was impressed with how you you actually you have charisma and you have you have charm and you seamlessly weave things together like you were playing one song and you mixed another song in between and then you went back to that song and it was just gorgeous how it flowed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're flattering me. You're flattering me. It's the it's, truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's not meant to be flattering, but, no, but I'm glad yeah. you. I'm glad it makes you yeah. feel good. <laughs> yeah, it does. But I, I I guess it just comes with practice and that and that regular weekly basis playing you know you have to develop that stage presence or else if you don't get people involved in your music then no one will listen to you so you got to put yourself out there you know well you got me involved oh, thank you. and and I have to say something I want to give you kudos for is that I oftentimes see musicians play and there's a common thread that they're getting drinks from the bar and, you know, they're free. You know, the, the bartenders yeah. give them a drink and, you know, if they're playing at a restaurant or at a bar. And I noticed, because I don't miss much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'm very observant. Don't and worry, I, I'm observant too. Well, you must be because yeah. you have talent. But I noticed that you got a glass of water. Yeah. And you weren't, you know, throwing down beers. You were... To me, that's like a dedication to your art, and you were professional at that time. Because, you know, if I'm working with someone, you know, I'm not going to go sit down and pound drinks mm -hmm. because I'm working with them. You mm -hmm. know, I want to be clear, and I want them to have everything in me, not mm -hmm. just a part of me. So so tell me, you don't drink much, huh? No, no. Maybe if we're, like, together with family, and it's family time, and they would have, you know, maybe imported beers or something, I'd take one because I'm of age now and whatnot. But, uh... More on a regular basis, no, I don't drink because I don't feel like I need it. I, and that's interesting that comment, you know. And, and I have to tell you, listeners, he's 18. He, he's 18. I don't know many 18 year olds like you. So, again, that's another thing that just set you apart in my mind and then your music. And you actually have some of your own songs that you were, you were playing last yeah. night. And I have heard people talk about you. And they're like, he's the Jimi Hendrix in Belize. Have you heard people tell you that? Yeah, yeah. Well, he is one of my main influences. And uh, sometimes people might find it too regular or common to have Jimi Hendrix as your influence. But uh, I think not with me because like how I'm in the Caribbean, it's good that I have some of that blues mix and that old 80s rock style with uh, 
mixing with the Caribbean and the reggae stuff, so it comes together and it flows real nicely, you know. It does flow very yeah. nicely. Yeah. So tell me, how long have you been playing? Well, my dad first taught me the guitar when I was eight. I played for about a year. But then I put it down because they had me playing a lot of church music and it got, I think I, think I kind of got bored playing the same chords over and over. So uh, I put it down, but back in high school, I picked it up when I joined the band and we started playing like different kind of music and stuff and it taught me a lot on the guitar. And uh, that's where I really started maybe in, third form in high school and then in sixth form is where I took off because like the band stuff wasn't really happening and sometimes I don't think Belizeans appreciate uh, the, the talent we have and and how musically inclined some of our people are and uh, so I just kind of went on my own stuff and started doing other kind of music and see how I can mix different genres and I kind of listen to what like my mom was listen to, listening to, not, not calling them old or anything, but sometimes... <laughs> and then your parents will appreciate you not calling them old, <laughs> coming from a parent. So good for you. Yeah, but, but, but having some of that old school flow mixed with some of the new, you can have both the older audience and the younger generation listen to you, and then it brings it into like a, a musical balancer where everyone can just really listen to some things that's rich and soulful. So what kind of music does your mother listen to? Well, she listens to a lot of uh, Otis Redding and stuff that plays on Love FM, you know? Yeah. That, those real oldies type and stuff. And uh, I don't mind it because it's slow and nice to chill at times. And then when I need to hype it up, I can listen to my hard rock and stuff. And, you know, the Jimi Hendrix fast stuff and whatever. Well, yeah. and, and last night I heard you play Purple Haze. Yeah. And I was blown away. <laughs> and again, you know, you can hear that on, you know, many people play that. And I've heard it played but you blew me away. There's something very special that you have. Well, I don't know what I just played. <laughs> so where do you think this comes from, the music that you play? Where does it come from? The music? Well, I always say the music comes from within. But that would be a cheesy line, wouldn't it? But uh, Not if it's the truth. <laughs> well, it's, it is the truth. And I think I'm, I, uh, my parents are very religious people, and we go to church every week, and we're kind of like our family is big in the church so so part of my musical uh how to say talent comes from playing at church and help leading the choirs uh, my dad did it for a couple of years but ever since we learned me and my little brother uh, we kind of took over the choir and now we lead the masses every week so apart from playing at greedies on fridays we get every sundays to play guitar and help lead and help sing and help keep our vocal tones up and whatever you know so I think that that's a big help because if you start looking at music as music on a whole and stop trying to separate it like because some people would be like oh I don't want to play church some music I mean I, I don't want to go play music at church my bad I mixed up my words I don't well, they, that's Creole by the way he just slipped some in there and it is interesting we're going to take a quick break because I want to talk more about this we'll be back in just a moment you're listening to Belize Talk Radio I'm your host Macarena Rose on the Overseas Radio Network <laughs> Macarena, tu cuerpo, alegría, Macarena, que tu cuerpo para dar la alegría y cosas buenas. Bala tu cuerpo, alegría, Macarena.